Well, hello, we're back. I'm Rich Folley. This is PBS Book View Now. We're at AWP 2016, this amazing conference of writers. I'm with Paul Lisicki, whose new book is The Narrow Door, A Memoir of Friendship. Welcome. Thank you, Rich. It's great to be here. Yeah. You're a writing, you're a writer and a writing professional. You you both write and teach. Write and teach. So yeah. this is kind of like your wheelhouse. It's it is my wheelhouse, yeah. and yeah, I'm I'm used to talking about teaching as much as I'm used to talking about writing, and all of that comes together here at this conference. You, you're you're having a, a great moment right now with this book. It's That's there's rich. a lot of attention being paid to it. It's a memoir of friendship. Explain to us the the idea of that. And, and, and how you put the book together. Right. It's, it's um, largely a book about my 26-year-long um, friendship with the writer, the late writer, Denise Gass, who died in 2009. And um, she was one of my first mentors. She did so much to, to bring me to life, you know, just as to lift me into other possibilities of living. And um, my earliest work was really influenced by her direction. I was also a reader of her work, so um, it was a long undeveloped um, mentorship that involved into friendship and moved through different levels of experience over those 26 years. Some of those years we were really in sync, and some of those years, a few of those years we didn't talk to one another, but we came back together late, um, you know, late in her life, and um, yeah. Um, but an, I think, oma yeah. an homage to mentors, though, like right. such an important, the 20, I mean, whether you faded in and out, the 26 years, I mean, what an amazing experience to right. have somebody yeah. in your corner for that long. Right, right, and that was, that was always true, even when we weren't always in unison. So um, I started the book about six weeks after she died. I, I was, um, okay on the surface and functioning and teaching, but I really needed some vehicle to keep her in the world. Um, so it, it started out simply as an attempt to record her gestures and, and how she walked across the room, how she held a coffee cup, and um, there was some solace in that. And it was also at the same time kind of unbearable because it was clear in the writing that she was gone. So I'd go back and forth structurally between recording those iconic moments and just telling it slant, like looking at volcanoes or thinking about the natural world out of whack, thinking about Joni Mitchell, who was uh, a figure who meant a lot to the two of us. So um, the, the book is organized in a kind of back and forth structure that, that just asked the reader to make conversations between its disparate parts. Did you know that like uh, this was gonna be the subject of the book? I mean, you, you had some time to think about it, obviously, and then did you, did you know, I'm gonna be writing a book about this and this is gonna be my work for the next no, right, year or you know, two? That's a good question. I, I thought I had a vague notion of a reader, but I think what freed me up about this book was I had just finished another manuscript. So there really wasn't any pressure to start something new. And I usually wander for a couple of years before, um, you know, but before a book starts to develop its own identity and character. So I just let myself wander for a while. And then it was clear after a bit that I was writing about you know, the record of my wandering in, in, the, in the wake of her death. So the book is essentially, the book essentially covers a year between the time after she died and, um, you know, a, the, the anniversary of the, the first year of her death. Talk about the moment when you, you two discovered each other and the, the idea of finding someone who would believe in you and guide right. you and help you. That's something that, right. um, whether you're a writer or not, yeah. is so important to people. Well, she was in a lit class that we were both scheduled to be in, and I'd already heard of her before that class, and I'd heard that she had a book coming out, and she was already talked about as a kind of star. So I walked in the class and saw this really electric woman who was you know, wearing ballet flats and seated at the chair with her legs crossed, and I sat at the other side of the room thinking, you know, she's never gonna talk to me, and I love this electricity, but um, yeah, we're, we're, she's too far, she's too far from 
who I am. You had built her up. Yeah, I built her point. up. I, I made her an icon. Yeah. And then, um, I, you know, I, somehow we started talking was in the first few weeks of class. She had heard that I was a writer. She asked to see an early story of mine, which I thought was not very good, but she found elements to praise in it. And I, you know, and she was excited about it. I thought, this is, you know, this is crazy. This is too much. But at the same time, um, I really appreciated her validation. And from that point on, I started reading her first draft. She would call me up um, sort of every day and read her earliest, rawest work to me. And at that time, I didn't have a developed vocabulary to say, oh, structurally, this is off. But she was really attuned to my instincts and how I breathed in reaction to what I heard, you know, whether I was laughing at a joke or whether I was silent at a moment where I should have you know, made a sound of awe. So, um, yeah, something um, really bodily and um, kind of animal happened in that conversation between us. What's great about the, the story you're describing is that it was two-way. I mean, oftentimes in a mentorship, the mentee looks up to this person yeah, so much, yeah. and the mentor is like has a busy life or a busy world. Right. Maybe, men maybe mentors other people as well or yeah, in, yeah, know, in yeah. formal or informal ways. But you guys found something that was two-way. Right, And that right. makes it even stronger, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think that the complication of the mentor-mentee relationship is that it's inevitably in flux. It's not static. And um, what started to complicate things is that, you know, I was taking lots of direction from Denise as to which you know, which fellowships to apply to, which conferences to go to, where I should go for my MFA. And I ended up, um, I ended up being the recipient of a lot of things that she had hoped for. So, you know, I think the story is in part about the, you know, the complexities, the up and downnesses that right. happen the over the course. jealousies, or maybe yeah. they you wouldn't yeah. call them that at the time. Yeah, jealousy seems too strong, but the undercurrent, yeah. Um, complexities of yeah of you know social position between two people who care about each other. Right. Regardless of that, and I'm sure that there was like some tension there. You never forgot, and yeah. it was something that was always really important to you. And, yeah, yeah. And and it's and it, uh, the fact that you've written a book about it strikes me as um, a testament and an homage that that, that she's yeah of the role she played. Right, obviously. right. I, I couldn't not write the book. I mean, some have asked me, wasn't it hard to write such a book, especially so soon after she died? But you know, when we lose people we love, we're under so much social pressure to look good for others, to make them feel better, to assure them that, that we're thriving. And I was so lucky to have this vehicle to, you know, to, to, to put all the things I wasn't allowed to express. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you started to write the, the book and you were thinking about your personal experience and the pain and, and the grief, um, what were the universal elements? I mean, obviously, as you're thinking about this, I need to make this interesting to other people. Right, right. And it, 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 yeah. was interesting to right. me because I applied it to my own relationships oh, and the good. role that some of these mentors play. But what was it for you that you thought, you know, here's the thing, mm -hmm. here's the thread that other people are going to see. Right. And well, I think after I'd accumulated, say, 30 pages, I realized that I wasn't simply writing about myself or writing about Denise, but I was writing about attachment and the complexities of friendship. And... Um, I wanted the book to be guided by a single or a group of interrelated questions, but the largest question being, who are we when we lose our sidekicks? Um, you know, how do we go on when our sense of ourselves is attached to somebody else? Yeah. So, you know, honestly, I think the, our friendships are probably, this is unacknowledged, I think, in the culture, but I think they're the deepest, often the deepest relationships, non-blood relationships, we carry through our lives. Um, you know, many of us move through different romantic partners, several romantic partners, several marriages over the course of a life. But for many of us, I think those friends are our constants. And we might not always be in touch every day. And, you know, we might separate for months or years, but, but they're important touchstones for 
um, how we understand ourselves and how we love. And how have you found people responding to the book? You've been talking about it now. What, how have the responses been? And uh, you know, obviously, people have gone through their own grief and losing right. people are really important to them. I, I've been getting lovely letters every day, um, and out on the road, people have been telling me their own stories about their long friendships or, or, you know, former friendships that have broken up. And there's yeah, there's lots of there's lots of feeling and affection around the subject. So yeah. Yeah, I, I love talking about yeah. all this. Well, the ebbs and flows of friendship and the roles right. of mentors and mentees. Right, right. It's really powerful stuff. Yeah, Paul Lissicki, the rich. book is The Narrow Door, a memoir of friendship. Congratulations. Thanks and, so much. And it's been really yeah, cool Yeah, thanks to talk for having me. Oh, thank okay. you for being here. Cool. Yeah.